Ladies and gentlemen, this is Zach Moonshine with Metal Devastation Radio. Right now on the phone with me, I have Gus Rios from the band Gruesome. What's going on, man? What's up, man? Glad to be here. So uh, tell everybody, what's going on right now in the world of Gruesome? Uh, right now, uh, well, I guess the record comes out Tuesday. Everybody here hopefully had a chance to listen to it this week on Decibel. Um, and working on booking some shows, actually. Fuck yeah, man. So h- how long has this band been together, and how exactly did you guys get started? I, I guess it's been about a year now since we officially were turned into a band. Um, it all started with BTA, really, with Matt singing in the first one, and then I, I got to be a guest drummer on the second one. And uh, Exhumed actually did a, uh, some shows on that second run, and Matt and I just kind of hit it off. We hung out and got hammered and talked about how much we love old school metal and, and in particular, old death. And I wanted to put together a DTA with uh, Rick Laws and Terry Butler and uh, and with Matt, and that didn't... Uh, that fizzled out because at the time those guys were real busy with Massacre. And then I, I just, Matt sort of joked when he said something about, man, we, we should just write our own. And it wasn't until a year later, um, I had quit the band that I was with for several years and all kinds of ridiculousness ensued. And once, once that all kind of cleared up, I, I actually just kind of sent Matt uh, a message going, hey man, maybe we should revisit that idea. And he sent me a demo, of, I don't know, like a, a couple weeks later or something, and and it just kind of blew me away. I was just like, man, this dude's like channeling the ghost of Chuck or doing a seance or something. Uh, but maybe it was a fluke, and then he sent me another song, and I went, all right, well, now we got to turn this into a band because this is just too cool. And I got Dan from Possessed uh, to, to help me cut the demos and get him in the band because I knew we were going to need a, uh, a good guitar player because we were looking to emulate, uh, you know, both Chuck and uh, James's styles. And, you know, he, he definitely aren't going to be able to do that unless you got a real killer guitar player. And uh, we cut a five-song demo. Relapse really dug it and uh, made a record. And then I got Robin involved because I actually was in a band with Robin when I was like 15 years old. And, you know, she's a solid bass player and she's old school like we are. That's fucking badass, man. The band name Gruesome. How did you guys come up with that? It it was, I mean, so much of this (laughs) was Matt doing it. And it it, it was the kind of thing where at first I was just so excited about, you know, because dude, Death Leprosy is still to this day my absolute favorite death metal record. I, it's just, I can't, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just perfect. If you looked up death metal in a dictionary, it should just say, listen to democracy. That's what it's supposed to be. The album cover, <laughs> the titles of the songs, the lyrics, the production. I mean, fuck the band's called death. You know what I mean? So yeah, it just, when, when he said the name gruesome, you know, it, 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 it is, it's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, and I've said this in a few interviews, and it's completely the, the reality of it. It's a kind of a, you know, kind of Neanderthal, like old school name. It's real simple. But if you look at what that was supposed to be in 1988, bands didn't, there weren't bands called like an ocean of slumber or, you know, or, <laughs> you know, that's not what, you know, bands in those days were just kind of, you know, knuckle dragging barbaric death metal and that's that's what we wanted to evoke with this band and the band name had to fit and then he even drew that logo that's fucking badass and, and dude, when, when i saw that logo i just started to laugh i just went god dude this i mean matt he just the, the dude's getting he's got a penchant for somehow he's got some chuck in him dude i gotta say <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I can I can definitely feel the death in that logo. It's got you know, it's got the upside down crosses. You got fucking shits on fire and fucking yeah, dude, the, 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 the the cobwebs, a little spider. I mean, it's all there. <laughs> fucking eyeball and shit. 
I mean, that's that's the whole purpose of the of the the whole purpose of the whole project is to kind of, you know, like me and Matt are old enough that we 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 bought leprosy when it came out. Like we remembered, and that's one of the things him and I were vibing about that first night we hung out is just the feeling of that rush you got back in 1988. I mean, you got to think, dude. Back in those days, there was no internet. There wasn't a. I don't even think Metal Maniacs was around back then. Like the only way I heard of death. Is a kid in school told me about him, and I remember looking at the cover of Screen Buddy Go, and I went, "Oh, dude, <laughs> I'm in." And then I heard it, and I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. You know, it's just we wanted to bring back that feeling, and it's it's the 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 production of the record had to be spot on. The album cover, dude, there was nobody, there was no other choice but Ed Repka. You know, Matt nailed it with the songs. He nailed it with the logo. My job was just to produce it and make sure it sounded correct. Yeah, the album cover, the art, man, is fucking amazing. And uh, now that you're telling me about the barbaric fucking caveman style of death metal, I'm totally feeling it looking at the album cover, too. You know, it's got the fucking cannibal-looking dudes and... I mean, that's what I... When I, when I contacted Repka, that's what I said to him. I told him the album title... And I said, you know, dude, just think it's 1988. We're, you know, we're basically trying to recreate what death did and uh, to the best of our abilities. And I just want you to kind of put yourself in that headspace and just savage land, cannibals, you know, eating people go with it. Like, I was really, that's all I told him. I said, go as gory and as brutal as you want, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. That definitely needs to be a poster on the wall for sure. Yeah. And I mean, when I, when we first got the, the, the print, the, the, the official one back from him, I was like, dude, this is going to look killer on a shirt. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, uh, I don't know. I was going to ask you about influences. I guess you pretty much already answered that. I mean, kind of. you know, on the, for this record, dude, I mean, it's just, it's one. You know, when Matt, it, it, it's all, it's it, all of this is, was really, it, it, it's because Matt was able to write songs that were so authentic sounding. You know, it made it really easy for me to play the drums a very certain way. Like, you know, if you listen to the last record I played drums on, it's night and day, you know, it's grind core, it's super fast. The drums sound totally different. And then hearing what Matt wrote, like, you know, there was only one way to approach it. And that was the super solid, heavy Bill Andrews style. So it, it, it made me play differently, and I, I tuned the drums differently. I, I knew the guitar tone that I had to get. And, uh, you know, we got Jared Pritchard, who used to be in a band called Eulogy, which is another old-school Florida death metal band, to mix the record. You know, like, we got everybody involved in this has the pedigree to make sure that it came out legit. You know what I mean? Yeah, fuck yeah, man. As far as... um. Like the local scene, where you guys are from. What can you tell us about that? Uh, there's a few bands down here. I mean, it, it's there's. Uh, I unfortunately work in the industry. I, I work for a backline company, so most weekends I'm either gigging myself or I'm working a show. So I don't get to go to a lot of local shows. But man, it seems like every at least once or twice a month, a lot of the local bands in the area are getting together and playing. Like Solstice is playing a lot. Uh, there's a good band called Coroidia that's playing a lot. So, I mean, it's 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 pretty happening. Um, one of the first potential shows for the band is a fest called Death in Miami. So, you know, there's definitely a scene down here. And, um, you know, and all the Tampa bands are still kind of around, you know. Morbid's kicking it. The obituaries, dude, playing better than ever. Uh, Brutality's yeah. doing a new record now. You know, so, I mean, it's, you know, it's happening. So, you know, us, us old guys are still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Well, uh, you, and you guys are on Relapse Records, too. What's that experience like? Well, they were pretty much the first ones to, uh, you know, re, uh, when we first put out the demo, 
Decibel magazine was, you know, we kind of did a release through them. And I mean, relapse kind of approached us within like 24 hours going, all right, well, we're in. And I mean, nice. dude, they own the death catalog. I mean, it was just a no brainer. You know what I mean? And those are, relapse has been around since, you know, 25 years now, dude. I mean, those guys know and respect death metal and metal in general. But, you know, especially being that they own the death catalog, like it, you know, it just felt, like the right label to go with, you know, and they were super stoked on the project from, from, from the get go, you know, they were really excited about it. And, you know, especially like Repka and when we told them wanted to get Repka, those guys, they were like, Oh man, that's awesome. That's perfect. You know, they, they were real, real supportive of what we're doing. So, you know, it was kind of like almost the, the one of the best and only choices for, you know, it's like Repka. It's just, they have the death catalog. That's where we need to be. Yeah, they they seem like a cool label, man. It definitely comes off in the way that they, uh, just the way that they present the bands and the way that they promote things that they are really passionate about what they're doing. Well, they're still fans, you know what I mean? They they still are just metalheads, you know what I mean? And and believe me, dude, in today's world, you know, a label's life is not a good one. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's tough. I, I just talked to Dan today and he told me he's like dude i went on the website and dude there's a lot of torrents for this record now because a lot of people have already gotten their pre-orders and it's already on the internet and people are already stealing it and you know i mean it, it is what it is the industry is it, it it is what it is and uh you know for a label to survive that and to continue to want to you know persevere is admirable, man. And a lot of people don't realize the, the damage that that stuff has done to the industry. But, um, you know, it, it's tough. And uh, and also, at the same time, it's people that say we're cashing in on, on a dead man's legacy. Dude, I haven't made a dime off this. Uh, we're doing this because we love it. It's, you know, we're all playing like our favorite style of death metal, you know what I mean? Like for all of us, it seems like, it feels like we're in debt. So we're just having a great time and, you know, but at the same time as a business, you, you, you know, we hope relapse does well with it because we would like to continue to make more records, you know, and if we, you know, it's like a give and take thing with the industry, man. And, and, you know, a lot of people need to realize that records don't get made for free, man. And, uh, you know, shit, shit costs money. So, you know, but we, we apparently have been selling some stuff. Like we sold out of the, uh, we sold out of the white and silver seat, uh, records, the vinyls. We sold out of the cassettes. I guess the CDs are doing well. We sold some shirts and man, I just want to definitely say on the record that due to everybody that bought this, we super appreciate it because we know that you could have easily have not have paid for it. And we really appreciate it, man. So kudos to all the fans that have actually spent their hard earned money on a record, my record or anybody else's, you know what I mean? That's cool, man. I was going to ask you too, if it was available on vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. They did relapse. Did. It's super cool, man. They, you know, it, they did uh, a bone white, a silver, a clear, and, uh, you know, the standard black and they sold out of the bone white the first day and they sold out of the silver, I think within a couple of weeks or something. What do you think about the new, uh, I mean, like, I don't guess it's really new, but like, it seems like a revival in the whole vinyl. Uh... I love it, man, because it goes back to, you know, I mean, I, I'm older, so I remember, you know, a record, dude, when a record came out, it was an experience, man. Like mm -hmm. when you knew that the new Slayer record was coming out or the new death record or whatever band it was like, dude, you waited for that day. There was no internet to fucking hear the, the, you know, the, the first single or you hear the whole stream. No, you didn't know what the hell you were getting until you bought that <laughs> record, man. And it was an experience. And, and, and not only that, it was like something you owned, man. You got the cover you know, you got to read the lyrics and the thank you. Like, you know, I was a little metalhead kid. I loved all that shit, man. Like you kind of, you know, you got a little bit of a glimpse into the band. You own something. It, it was a lot more than a fucking MP3 in your phone. You know what I mean? It's just, 
the value of music has sort of gotten really diluted, and the vinyl resurgence is sort of giving it some new life, man. Dude, vinyl, I heard recently, vinyl makes up 40% of all physical music sales. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah, it that's fucking awesome, man. It gives, something, it gives people something to collect. You know, it, you get to look at a really killer cover. You know, I, I think it's great, man. I think it's fucking awesome. That's what I love too, man. I love I love being able to hold the whole, you know, the big. It, it's a package, and you just open it up like a book. Sometimes, you know, reading through it and the artwork, you know, it's just the. Uh, it's just a whole different experience than it is, uh, even with a CD or a you know or a cassette tape. But I mean, an MP3. That's just yeah. I mean, you it's know. just like I said, the times have changed, you, you know, and I, I I, get it and I see it, but, you know, I'm of an age that, uh, you know, like I said, dude, when a record came out, it was an experience. It was like, a, it was an event, man. Like, and you sat down and you listened to that whole record, top to bottom, you know, and back when it was cassettes, you'd press play and then you'd flip sides and press play again. And you sat there and you listened to the whole thing and you were like reading along with the lyrics and... You know, this brings back a little bit of that. And, um, you know, I, I think it's great that it's, it's, it's hip and it's trendy now. And I hope the trend continues. Lord yeah, knows that sure. you know, the industry needs it. Most definitely, man. Well, uh, what kind of plans do you guys have for the future? Uh, trying to, you know, get some shows happening. You know, we do have to work around, you know, Zoom is still Matt's main thing and, Band still in possess and Robin sells merch for every band on earth, it seems. Um, so we just have to wait for the right, the right windows to open up and the right opportunities. Uh, realistically, man, it'd be, you know, this will be a band that does probably like an East Coast run and a West Coast run. Uh, you know, maybe some one offs here and there. And then, you know, probably like a European tour and then go to Europe in the summer for the festival season. But, you know, this is never going to be like uh, a super full touring band, you know, unless it blows up and turns into like, you know, the second coming of Death for Real and all of a sudden the band's immensely popular, which of course I welcome, but realistically, you know, we'll, we'll play some shows. But I mean, that, that, that lends some kind of coolness to it because the gruesome show will be, you know, like a cool thing. It, it won't be, oh, it's gruesome again. You know what I mean? Like, it'll be like, oh, dude, let's definitely check out that show. Oh, yeah, man. Well, Gus, I'm about out of questions for you. Is there anything else you want to add to let the people yeah, know? Man, I appreciate the time. I appreciate the support, especially to all the metal fans. I, I want everybody to know that, you know, everybody in the band, we really, we did this out of respect and love for Chuck and the guys that he played with, you know. I mean, even before we did any of this, man, we hit up Eric Reif who handles all things death and he was Chuck's manager back in the day. And, you know, we, we wanted his blessing, man. Like we want to make sure everybody knows that this is very respectful. We're not trying to cash in on a, you know, dead man's name or any of that, dude. Like we really are just doing this because we love the music he made. The records he wrote changed all our lives. And in my opinion, if you play in a band and your drummer plays double bass and your guitar is tuned a little lower and your singer sounds like Cookie Monster, dude, you owe Chuck, you know, a big thank you. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, it's all out of respect and love. And, uh, you know, we just hope everybody is uh, on board for the ride with us because, you know, unfortunately, we're never going to hear another death record. You know, hopefully we bring you as close as we could to maybe experiencing some some new uh, death-ish songs. And thank you for everybody that's bought the record and everybody that's uh, supported the band or, you know, we'll hopefully buy a ticket to see us live and whatever, you know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll see you guys out there. Fuck yeah, man. I also got to give a big shout out to uh, Ear Split PR. Oh, yeah, man. man. Those guys are the greatest. Yeah, this is awesome, man. Super cool. <laughs> Fucking always sending cool shit, man. Um, Gus, before I let you go, I got to get you to make us a station tag. Cool? Yeah, man. No problem. All right. Whenever you're ready, you just say something like, this is Gus from Gruesome, and you are listening to Metal Devastation Radio. 
or Metal Reigns Supreme. All right. Just let me know when you're ready. Whenever you're ready. Hey, guys, what's up? This is Gus Rios from the band Gruesome, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio, where Metal Reigns Supreme. <laughs> 